If you went into somewhere like a fine dining restaurant, you might get impeccable service, awesome cocktails, the food might be spectacular, but ultimately there often isn't vibe. Yeah. And that's not to say they're not doing an awesome job, but that's just not what we want to do. In this episode of the Served With podcast, you're about to get vibe checked. George and Carl together manage Borley Borlison Cocktail Bar, which has so much vibe that they're uniquely qualified to tell me what vibe is and how to improve it in a venue. Now more than ever, we need their advice. Today on Served With, we ask, how do you improve your vibe? Is, is a vibe different from an atmosphere? Um, I think a vibe is a fun atmosphere. And I think that when you have a fun atmosphere, you actually, interestingly, you care less about some of the other details. What is Vibe? Vibe is basically going beyond customer service uh, and is making sure to give an experience. Um, to be an awesome Vibe, there are so many, there's probably about 100 things that have got to come together. And most of uh, any demographic don't really understand what that is. Okay. So for example, in Bali, if we do everything right, but just say the air handling is wrong, and it's kind of stuffy, a little bit hot, that can ruin the vibe. So what you need to have is make sure that, say, the air conditioning is working, there's fresh air handling coming in, there's the hot air being taken out, the music has got to be at the right volume, at the right tempo, and mixed correctly. Yeah. And you, so there's lots and lots of things you put it together. And I think that if you get one of these things wrong, it can interrupt the vibe. But <clears throat> what takes us from ambiance to vibe yeah. is the people yeah, and the vibey people that, that that work, in a way, because for example, people that are staff that, that that create the vibe, you cannot teach somebody how to be vibey. That's true. You, you are vibey. It's not teachable. It's mm. you are or you are not. Somebody that is not vibey will not be vibey. Generally speaking, you are vibey or you not. But ultimately, you want to surround yourself with people not who are sort of too cool for school, who you know don't like to try to try hard. For us, cool is something where. We do an awful lot of prep and organization before service. And then when we open, we make it look like it's easy. Yeah. And then we set the ambience right. And then we have people with personality. And we encourage our staff to show personality. And if we have vibey staff who can show personality in their service. And interestingly, I mean, literally stalk it, having QR code ordering is something that really helps us do that. Yeah. So rather than using QR code software to remove staff, we just enable it so they don't have to take orders and take payments. Instead, they can literally be vibe checkers. And we actually call like our VIP staff a vibe checker. We built into the, yeah. the job title. We changed it from when we added QR codes. We, <laughs> we truly did. When, cool. we, when we added QR codes, and we thought about the wage cost saving initially, and then we realized that people in Bali really, really want vibe. So yeah. we just used it as a tool, which then can mean our waitresses, in inverted commas, can then actually be vibe checkers. And then they have more time, and they can be more flirty, they can be more fun, they can dance around with each other, they can have a great time. How, how do I say to my staff, okay, your role is to vibe check, this is what you do, off you go. Um, sure, I mean, I don't know if you remember, do you remember that training session we did with, we did every single person in the company, yeah. even our bartenders, even though they don't take orders. Yeah. And we went through a, a number of different training, basically how they can add vibe and how they can show personality. And it's basically, the, the underpinning thing was imagine you're serving your friends. And so if your friends were literally sat on a table and you're not taking their orders, what would you do? You literally go up to them and go, hey guys, how are you doing? And you know, be like really kind of fun with them. Yeah. Trust me, have this cocktail. This is the DB Dabberson. It is the best drink. It's been on, it's the highest selling drink. It's been on menu for five years. You must have it. And actually then they can sort of order what they want and then come back and check on them. If it's someone's birthday, bring them a birthday cake, you know, bring them a birthday shot, have fun and basically contribute to their night as if they're your friends. Yeah, but the, the, yeah. and uh, there was as well something interesting that um, George was saying. We, we were having an interview with somebody that came to party, uh, to take him to party to Bali and said, I want to work here because I feel like the staff are, are partying with us. Right. And, and this is, we, we are not partying with them, but the, fa the fact of being there with them, vibe checking, making sure that the vibe is right. And so in the VIP, we've got some, a, few, a few waitresses that are very good and sometimes the fault that they would have is to spend more, t more too much time with the customers and enjoying, I mean, like making sure, like people are really enjoying them and want to chat with them and yeah. et cetera. Mm -hmm. And when I, at some point I'm like, okay, now we'll just let's get back to work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sparklers, 
um, which I think quite a lot of venues. Uh, sparklers like fireworks sparklers. Yep. Um, so you'll be really careful. There's a lot of health and safety that comes with them. But actually, you can imagine, I mean, our demographic is about sort of 70, 75% female, aged between 20 to 30. So if someone orders, say, a bottle of champagne um, or a birthday cake, and we have loads of special occasion people, actually, vibey staff coming out with sparklers and actually dancing around with them, it's awesome. So the, the, the staff member has the sparklers. They don't give the sparklers to people. No, no, no they just go. Yeah, yeah exactly. his, hey. <laughs> Woo! And actually, if it's your birthday, we won't just give you a birthday cake with a sparkler. We will get a few staff around and actually come around you and make a massive scene because it's awesome. I mean, even if you hate commotion on your own birthday, it's still cool when you've got three or four staff all singing, dancing around you with sparklers. It's just a you know, it's a fun thing. It's the staff piece. Um, and then, and then you mentioned there's there's hundreds of mm -hmm. other elements that that yeah, that comprise to it. Yeah, but you mentioned air conditioning. Uh huh. Okay. Well, what's, what's, give give me like a quick long list. Like, what's, I mean, what what have I got to actually okay. create the list? <laughs> so, so, I mean, I mean we, we, I we can be that long. Be that long. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, we definitely can't go through the walls. There's, there's so many. But if we have so boring air conditioning. Uh, I mean, air conditioning, fresh air handling, and air extraction on, on, on the boring end of the scale. At the other end of the scale, there's things like um, uh, custom-made rainbow emitting CO2 cannons above the dance floor. So, but what's there's a kind of distinction there between things that you don't want to get wrong. Yeah. I'm on, in the best, in the most perfectly air conditioned experience of my life. I can tell you that I did not notice. Yeah, air conditioning. Do you do you have do you have like a couple of different vibes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have we have it progresses through the night, um, and they're not on time set. So for us, we have both lighting, sort of the plain vanilla lighting around the venue, and that is on a time set. And obviously, it depends on literally how dark the day is. We can bring it forward or darker, yeah. so it gets darker through the night. But then we also have then the disco lighting, which Carl's alluding to, which basically we can manually change for different songs. It is also synced up to the music, but actually through the night we will then get it sort of faster and more intense depending on what's happening. Uh, but on, do, 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 depending on what's happening? Uh, how many people, who's, how many people are dancing, okay. um, what the crowd is like, what the vibe is like. So if it's 7 p.m. the dance floor is full, which does sometimes happen, we will then have a very different atmospheric sort of condition inside um, where the DJ might have faster lighting, more intense music, and actually might be pressing the CO2 cannons. But on a Sunday night when uh, we have an event called Fuck Mondays, where we do a hip hop night, hip hop yeah. and R&B, and then the lighting will be a different sort of feel to what a Friday 10 p.m. would be. Are you reacting to what's going on, or do you use it to actually manipulate what's going on? Like there's, there's an accelerator. Yeah. Famously, the big vibe shift that happens in most venues is the it's last order they turn the lights on, <laughs> and that's like they've, they've murdered the vibe. Yeah, that's that's what that is. Yeah. So actually, we intentionally don't do that okay we um there's a way that we can do it without being like in your face get the fuck out but more like hey guys time to wake up <laughs> it's time to go yeah. so it's like really so i mean it's i, I actually trained the, the new manager that we have it, because they started putting the big lights cleaning lights on straight away the, when i say cleaning lights it's very very bright yeah, white lights yeah, and i but, said no first you take off the disco lights then you gradually put the venue lights up, 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 or over one minute. Yeah. And then we leave it on for like a couple of minutes. And then when it's time, and it's been time for already five minutes, it's like, okay, now, yeah. boom, you always get out. You're listening to Served With Podcast. And one way you can improve your vibe immediately is to subscribe. There really is no downside to this. It doesn't require any venue investment or fantastic staff. It just means that you'll get conversations like this rooted directly to your inbox. Uh, all our bartenders are WFA qualified, meaning World Flair Association qualified. Yeah. <laughs> it's something which we don't even talk about on our website or on our Instagram. Um, but we do it because we sort of want to surprise. I think it's fun when you're in a proper cocktail bar to be at the bar anyway. But when you've got people who are absolutely amazing doing world class flair, yeah. and they're not doing it to slow down the service, it's working flair. So basically, they'll be making a drink for you and they'll be taking an order from someone else. Someone will be shaking a drink, they'll actually be like juggling stuff, but doing it immaculately quickly. And when people are flaring, but not doing it in a um, I think flaring can, also, can sometimes be perceived negatively, and people think it's someone clowning around behind the bar. These guys are Jedi's, they're absolutely amazing. And when you see people at that level, being so busy and making drinks so competently with such sort of flair and charisma, most people will get persuaded <coughs> without any sort of verbal interaction mm. to actually try one of the cocktails. Actually, there's, there's as well a, another factor that happens to learning boy boys, and it's the fact that 
as Joe said, a lot of our cocktails are theatrical, even without the flaring. Yeah. And what would happen very often is people go into the bar and be like, can I have the cocktail with the fire or the cocktail with the lollipop or the cocktail that, because they all look very different and they all have a very specific look. Yeah. And they're like, okay, I want this one. And they already with their phone up starting to film before you start to do anything. Which is the very Instagrammable, <laughs> vibey again <laughs> thing. Yeah. If I was sat here thinking, I don't want to create the Baldy Ballerson fun in your face vibe. What I want is something that's very sort of restrained and um, and refined. Not that Baldy isn't refined, but you know what I mean. This is yeah. a, I'm creating an underground wine bar. It, it's it's the same. Go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same personality type of stuff. Yeah, <clears throat> and it's exactly the same. Um, I mean, we there's a lovely wine bar in Shoreditch, which we go to, um, Shoreditch Wine House, which is the exact opposite of Woody Borson. Yeah. Um, it's a very small little place on Shoreditch High Street. And I mean, a lot of our management team love it and we go there. And they have an awesome vibe because the owners and there's this sort of staff there are just super fun. They will sit there. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. If we sat down to have a drink, they would literally put up a chair and go, right, guys, what are you guys going to have today? And you might say, I want a red wine. You say, white. You go, right, try this, try this. They come and bring um, wines over for you to taste. You know, on the house, they don't care. What they're trying to do is make sure that you get the best glass of wine and you have a great time. Yeah. Um, it, there's there's so many factors. Yeah. To get the vibe right. And I think when you get to a level where you can sort of almost sell vibe, which I think is really, really rare. Um, for me, if I think about sort of London bars, like Kalukale and Shoreditch, I really, really like Kalukale. It's one of the world's best bars, awesome cocktails. But I would always rather go to somewhere like Bodega Negro in Soho. The vibe there is consistently awesome. Um, and it's one of those things where I enjoy sitting there watching that, watching it, because there are so many little things that they do to contribute to the vibe. And when they get it right, it's just awesome because it just makes everyone, is, you can see everyone's having a good time, even if the drinks are a little bit slow or sometimes a little bit rude. You don't really care because the vibe is so good. Consultancy boardroom types who think about marketing, you know, they, the term they use, they talk about customer delight, which is, which is kind of a perversion of the idea of vibe, right? Mm -hmm. but, the, but I guess the sense there is that you want to be surprised by something. Yeah. That it is that you have a set of expectations and then like, they're, they're, expectations. they're surpassed or just kind of changed in some way by, by something that you encounter that you didn't expect. Mm. Which yeah. could be with a a CO2 spray or something else. Yeah. CO2 cannon, not a spray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not like a little wipe uh, <laughs> down the surfaces at least uh, maybe. You're listening to the Served With Podcast. They say that music is the food of love, which would make food the music of love. And I think both ideas make sense. Morley is more focused on music, so it's time to ask, how important is music to vibe? Music. How do you choose music? Uh, so, we, I mean, we, we, we've got great DJs. We've, that is, again, um, one of the points of surrounding ourselves with great, uh, great stuff. Yeah. We, we have uh, a set group of DJs that create the vibe as well in the way they DJ. I mean, DJing is, is beyond the fact of knowing how to operate the CDJs and everything, which is potentially 5% of the job. Yeah. <clears throat> I would say 90% of the job of a DJ is really creating and understanding and responding to the crowd, which goes directly with creating a vibe, basically. A good DJ, a bad DJ will put his music, his playlist, be like, okay, I love this music, blah, 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 and regardless of the, of the crowd. There's a song that Corey and other DJs have managed to put back. It's, it's sometimes they're random songs that they're like, okay, I'm going to try to play this one. And it, it's like a hit or miss, but it's like their personal little challenge. And I was really hoping that it wouldn't work. I was really, really hoping that it wouldn't work. But unfortunately, it works really well. And now he plays it every time he plays. And that's Baby from Justin Bieber. <laughs> and um, okay, so okay, so I'm going to give you some songs. You tell me whether they're from Bolly Bollison or not. So, um, okay. Left Outside Alone by Anastasia. Um, Can you sing it? Yeah. <laughs> I can, I can't sing it all. Um, <laughs> Uh, All my life I've been waiting for you to send a fairy tale my way. Probably, probably a brunch, yeah. From Paris to Berlin. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. That's that's more. You're you're more hesitant, Carl. Yeah. 
it's all probably 20% of the crowd will learn the, the song. The Rules song by Dua Lipa. One, don't pick up the phone, you know he's only calling because he's drunk and alone. Two, don't let yeah, him. Yeah, 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 100%. Um, but it, it is interesting though because that's something that actually that changed in the pandemic. Obviously, TikTok was there before, but not uh, it wasn't wildly popular. And now it's actually up to I mean, I've challenged the music director to do this to regularly scoop up and see what the most viral things are on TikTok. And actually, if they are songs <laughs> that people can dance and lip sync to, then actually they will put them in at the right time. What about um, I think it's really important that a lot of people try and play music that they think is cool. Yeah. And I am passionate about the music that I like. I really am and I think I've got a cool playlists. We can share some afterwards. But <laughs> but it's really important that I, I know that if I put my music on to our demographic. You'd empty the club. Yeah, yeah. I would. And um, it's about really understanding what they think. I would like that Destiny Child Survivor song. So what they kind of think is cool and fun and easy to dance to. And something like some of the TikTok trends, which is so alien to most of our management team except our marketing team, we put, when we put them on, you'll see the whole room will start dancing and, and they know that the songs. Some businesses like reverse engineer their whole being an expression through what it, I guess once it would have been Instagram and what's Instagramable yeah. and now, now would be TikTok. Um, we very much want to create a proper hospitality business where uh, it's an awesome vibe and service comes first and the customer experience comes first ancillary but secondary to that is making sure the customers can share it i think there are uh, there aren't many but there are still too many bars that basically rely on having an instagram moment and using that to pull people in yeah and it's sort of i think a lot of people who don't know Bordy, who haven't seen it would think that that's what we are they would think that we're an instagram bar and we very much aren't I and mean, we're super busy all the time and it's because we are very much a cocktail bar <coughs> which prides itself on giving kind of cool sort of atmosphere and service and giving great experience the actual orbit itself takes up you know only sort of 15 percent of our venue um, you'd you'd consider that a a slight if i was to turn around yeah. and go oh Bally, that's an instagram bar you'd be like that's he's he's just insulted my bar uh, i would say yes it's instagrammable but it's not an instagram bar yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I mean we hear it so much that we would it's not something that we would sort of care about <laughs> <laughs> but, but we have all the time people who come into Bali and then actually have their expectations passed that's a customer delight and they, they say oh we thought this was just an Instagram bar and yeah. actually when they come in they've had sort of truly like world class cocktails served by amazing bartenders who are flaring and they're getting awesome service and they're having a great time and they're dancing all night and they didn't quite realise why the vibe was so good and why it had such a good night to make it so it's shareable yep like for us, a photo booth is kind of contrived. Yes, they, they, there's a lot of photo booths out there now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and for us, that's kind of contrived. That's saying, you're having a fun night, go in the photo booth and take this thing. We would rather say, the whole venue is almost like a photo booth. Have an awesome time, make it so the walls look so pretty that people want to take walls again. You know? And actually, you're having such a fun um, experience with the bartender that you want to film what he's doing. There's no reason why not. It just means you've got to sort of leave no stone unturned to make it so everything is. It, it, it is a show. I mean, that being said, we still have a photo booth as well. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any other final kind of parting tips or anything about, about vibe setting? Uh, be cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, no. Yeah, the other thing I think um, is that we, we do detailed shift reports after every night, after every single night. And on there, we talk a bit about bar service, we talk about compliance. Um, venue maintenance and cleanliness and one of the things vibe controls we have a section on there where whoever's running the shift will actually give a bit of sort of narrative to explain about how the night went and how they could have done things better and it's really useful because invariably there are other people who might be in the venue some people might come in for some drinks on the day off and actually it allows everyone collectively to sort of understand what vibe we're trying to achieve that was served with podcast for your complimentary Vibe Shift Survival Kit, you will need a handheld CO2 cannon that blasts rainbows into your venue, several staff members who are impeccably trained at service but naturally vibey guys, and to know in some detail the pulse of the music to which your patrons want to listen. You may need to stand up for it as well. Check out George's advice on handling DJs who are NVC, that's non-Vibe compliant, caught in audio format only because our camera could no longer handle the Vibe and stopped recording. And I would literally go to the point, we had it on the USB, uh, this one song on a USB amongst others, and I would say, look, I'm going to show you what you should be playing. And of course, they would, they would this is the thing, they sort of intimidate you and say, you can't do this, this is my set. It's like, step away from the decks, <laughs> put it on, and the whole room goes, Woo! and they start dancing. <laughs>
And you, yeah. get, and you get them 150 people dancing and you look at them cold and be like, your job is this. That song, It's 1973 by James Blunt. Who knew? All the rage with millennials and the all-important Gen Z crowd. This podcast is brought to you by Storekit, the vibiest mobile ordering system on the market. That's not a joke. In addition to Vibe QR codes, our mobile ordering is available in dark mode and supports video menu items for those cocktail videos which are leveraged expertly by Borley Borlison. Most importantly, we've cut all of the gunk at the end of the checkout to a minimum because, as a great man once said, there's nothing which will kill your vibe faster than asking to download an app. Keep subscribed for more podcasts like this.